Hello and welcome to Middle Aged Moto. Uh, as you guys can see, if you look down at my dash, I still have not fixed the gas gauge. It's still an intermittent problem, and right now it's not working. It hasn't worked since I left the house this morning. Uh, today I wanted to touch on uh, what I did to get my suspension sorted out on this bike. And my impressions of the suspension when I got it new from the dealer. Uh, before I jump into this, I want to preface by saying I am not a suspension specialist. I recommend doing a ton of research. And if you have access, which I don't in the state of Alabama, or at least in my area, to a professional that can help you set up the suspension to confirm that everything is perfect, uh, this is just an informational video. Uh, if this is the first video that you're watching on this channel, I am 5'9 and I'm 260 pounds. Most of the time, uh, most of the new bikes are set up, from what I've researched, to a person that's 150 to maybe 175 or 180. So I definitely exceed that. Now the bike can definitely handle it because they are set up for or capable I should say to have a pillion or a passenger. So you know the, the extra weight it's what I have. So when I first bought the bike um, Ducati sets the suspension up extremely light, uh, extremely soft and um, one of the main areas that I've researched that will help with uh, the suspension setup is your sag. You're either your static sag or your normal sag once you're sitting on the bike. And these bikes are set up with, to best of my knowledge, zero static sag. Uh, so Again, this is not going to be a video on exactly how to set it up because I'm not a professional. I'm just going to tell you what I did after my research. So realizing the bike had no static sag, that was the first thing. And I was able to find the requirements for my bike or the recommendations, I should say, for static sag. And I set that up. And then I had, you know, some help from my wife to help me set up the sag so when I got on the bike again static sag is just the weight of the bike itself what that does to the suspension and the regular sag or yeah I guess it's called regular sag <laughs> the regular sag is is when you get on the bike what is your weight due to the geometry of the bike and if you mess the geometry up, especially you got to remember under hard acceleration, your weight is moving to the back of the bike, to the back wheel and the front end starts getting a little lighter. So if your rear suspension is not set up or it's way too soft as it was, uh, it throws the geometry off. And I'm here to tell you that when I first, after I got my first oil change done and I was, I was opened up to where I could ride the way I wanted to and I did a uh, hard acceleration full throttle acceleration it felt very squirrely very uncomfortable uh, the bike was just lofting around it was uh, it was it was downright un, uh, you know uncomfortable to do so I stopped doing it and I thought oh my god it's it must be my weight that's doing that well I did some research I looked into it I looked what the stock settings are and if you have a Ducati in your manual they have the stock settings they have settings with the pillion and they have sport settings and it's it's pretty good now I basically said well all my sport bikes I had them set up really tight let's go and do uh, the sport setting so I dialed everything into the proper sports setting after I got my static sag done and my regular sag and by, with some help from my wife to measure the distance and, and get my, my measurements there. I'll, I'll put a link 
uh, down below, or if not a link, I'll put you know the website that you can cut and paste. Uh, that I got the information as far as setting up requirements for SAG and static SAG or recommendations. I keep saying requirements. So I'll, back to my setup. What I did was I went and set the rebound and dampening in the front to the sport settings which are basically four out from completely closed four out I want to say that the factory settings and then I'll put it up here were 12 out on the, the rebound and dampening on the front and it was just way too soft it was kind of mushy with my weight the rear suspension uh, rebound and dampening were also set way way too soft so i have put my settings up top of what i did for for each setting because i'm not it's, i did it a year and a half ago and i'm not 100 percent sure i do know my rebound and dampening on sports settings is like i said is four clicks out where the bay comes standard with 12. so i went out for a ride and it was just too rough the roads here in alabama now this is a you know fairly nice road but you really probably can't see that there's a lot of you know dips and bumps and heaves and well here we go it's all split up and you know they're big on patching rather than paving and the patches just make the roads less than fun now i watch motor bloggers all the time that are on roads around the world and you know i really have nothing to complain about from some of the roads that i see you know some of the guys across the pond their roads they complain about their roads of being just horrible but with that said i digress so realizing that my suspension was you know i was hoping that the sport settings would be perfect i just pop it on and boom i'm ready to roll I didn't like it. Now the rear, under full acceleration, it totally changed the bike by tightening up the rear. I mean, totally. Uh, when I did a full acceleration, the back didn't dip like it did before. The bike did no longer felt squirrely. The bike was tight, and you know, a zero to sixty or a zero to you know beyond. You know, full acceleration, banging through the gears using the quick shifter. Uh, if you tighten that up, you will actually, because of the torque, the power of this bike, the front wheel will come up, just power up. Not much, and you have your wheelie control set. Uh, my wheelie control set at three in sport, and I think it's set in five in in touring. Um, but with that said. Every time I would go into the turn, the front was just too tight and the front was 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 like it was forcing it to skip and pop and, and it just it was jarred me apart. Now one one reason was that when you set switch your suspension, I rode way too long. I rode probably six, eight months before I decided because I was very intimidated by the suspension. I didn't want to mess anything up. But as long as you can count, you're good to go. I mean, you and you have your reference point of where it is. So as you close it by cranking it, which you're basically closing a little valve in the suspension, just count the clicks until it, it ends and then write that down. And then you know what the stocks, that's how I determined that it was, I believe 12, but I'll, I'll put it up like I said. And so I basically, started messing around so I went came out to five clicks uh, no six clicks out and went for a ride I left the, the back the way I had it set up the back is still set up to the sports settings and it's it's fine I mean it's definitely fine uh, the front and where you get the feedback in your hands and stuff like that was it was just too jarring so I think I came out to six and then went for a ride and it was much better but it was still a little bit for my liking because I, I don't ride real aggressive at all, all the time I ride like I'm riding right now a lot of the time 
I'm just out cruising. And, you know, I'm you know, going 65 right now. But the road, this road that I'm on is just, it's a wide open. This is some farmland out near my house. A lot of cattle and, and stuff like that. But the suspension still to me felt a little bit tight. So I came out eight clicks for rebound and dampening. And I went for a ride and it was my sweet spot. When I got aggressive and I blew into a turn, the front didn't skip around. The front seemed to turn in and, and glue to the ground real, real good. It just seemed, uh, you know, it was really enjoyable. And it was still, you know, what was weird, it, it still felt a little bit harsh. I kind of liked we just cruising with the suspension the way it was set up, at, you know, in the beginning, but that's not why this isn't, you know, you can't cruise on this bike, but this isn't why I bought this bike. This, I bought this bike for a little spirited ride and hit some twisties and, uh, and you know, messing around on some back roads and, you know, getting on it, powering out of a turn and stuff like that. And uh, that sock suspension, I, I just couldn't do it. So once I got that set up, I just was in shock, you know, and I really, really wish that I had decided to, to jump into the suspension aspect uh, early on instead of waiting. I think I waited six, eight months before I set everything up. And, you know, I'm jealous. You know, I watched a lot of Dave Moss. If uh, you want some really good reference, uh, Dave Moss Tuning, I think it is. He's a YouTuber, but he's a suspension tuner, and he's real technical. He goes into tire wear. Now, a lot of it's track-related tire wear, but you can relate that to, to the street also. But he goes into, you know, the sag, the static sag, uh, rebound dampening, um, what different tire wear means as far as bad suspension setup. Another thing that I was kind of negligent on was my tire pressures and it's always been a problem I've always just jumped on the bike and gone and then every couple weeks check it but I found that you know almost and once the bike sits because I said in the earlier videos I travel for work on the norm so I ride Saturdays and Sundays and that's it I'm gone all week usually Occasionally I get a ride in, but my bike sits and it's seven o'clock in the morning and it's 73 degrees and humid right now. So it'll be in the 90s today. And you know it's it's something you really gotta it'll that'll change your whole characteristics of your your handling also and it'll prematurely wear your tires immensely. So I've been really checking that. And then another thing I noticed that the tire pressure, there's two ratings and it's based on weight. And I'm closer to the weight of a passenger. You know, I have two people being on the bike at 260. So I started raising my tire pressure and the bike's characteristics were even better with that. Now, one thing that's super confusing, and, and I've read, tried to read up a lot, but it's everybody's opinion is different. The tire manufacturer recommends a tire pressure. The manufacturer Ducati has, you know, the sticker that they recommend tire pressure for the Debrellis that come on it. And, you know, a lot of the time, I was just going by, I used the sticker as a guide, to be honest with you. And I run, right now, I run um, 40 in the rear and 36 and a half or 36 in the front. That's what Ducati's specs are if you're riding with a pillion or a passenger. So that's what I decided to do. I'm gonna, you know, with my with my weight until I drop some weight. That's my tire pressure, and it seems to, because I was getting some premature tire wear. Well, let's put it this way: I know that the original Pirellis 
or a sticky tire and they don't last very long but I got 2100 miles out of my original tire my rear tire and it was shot now I don't wait until cords are sticking out it's just not how I roll but once the center line of tread is gone but the tire it was just and it flat spotted real and it was uneven and it was choppy and a lot of that was contributed to the tire pressure being incorrect but also it contributed to uh, my suspension being kind of jacked up for that period of time but you know I hope this helped you out uh, again I'm not a specialist this is just my settings uh, of what I did but I think what I'm trying to, to get at is my full hearted recommendation is to find someone that will tune your suspension or research it figure it out you can't mess it up you just gotta count pay attention and uh, you know I haven't looked through many owner manual other than Ducati right now I know Ducati and I'm assuming that you know the other manufacturers have the stock settings or have the settings in there for clicks so you just have to determine and a lot of it will say from closed on uh, my bike it's cranked all the way to the right closes it so zero is fully closed and then I believe it's zero I'll put it up top what what I found um, there's some really good suspension books out there there's some really good guys on YouTube uh, Dave Moss again I'm gonna repeat that he's he's pretty sharp the only thing I you know I understand but it's kind of frustrating is he's got uh, clips some of the time so you got to look because it'll just give you a teaser and they want you to go to his website and actually pay to watch the video the guy's a pro and the guy's got to make money so he's gave, there's a ton of videos on there that are are full videos that are no charge uh, but you know you can support them it's kind of you know they just started that you know I just caught that relatively recently but with that if you uh, if you heard something you like and you want to kind of follow the journey of the growth of this channel um, my goal is to post a video at least one video a week and I've got you know my previous videos and I'll put a link to a couple of them at the end of this so you can go back and kind of figure out why I bought this bike and, and some different things and what I'm gonna be doing with the channel rather than repeating it all again if you see something you like please comment like subscribe and uh, I hope to talk to you all soon